Today, let's talk all about how to pick the perfect image for your audiogram so that you can start promoting your podcast. More details coming up next. Hey there, podcaster. My name is Ashan Man, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and a podcast producer. Today's video is brought to you by, of course, Headliner.app. It is the application that I am using to create all of my audiograms so that I can promote my own podcast. You can go on over to their website, Headliner.app, to start your own uh, audiogram today. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. And of course, head on over to their YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find their YouTube channel right up here in the card on this video. Tap it and go over over to subscribe and show them some love and learn something new from Headliner. So today's video, we are talking all about how to pick the perfect image for your audiogram. So let's recap first. In video one of this series, um, we talked all about the basics of social media and how to use social media in preparation for creating our audiograms. So there's going to be a little bit of work that you need to do uh, beforehand before you can start creating your audiogram. And now let me make this uh, clear to you. In that first video, we're talking, those are the very basics uh, when it comes to social media. There are much more advanced strategies that you can utilize when it comes down to using social media and audiograms. But for right now, we're just talking about the basics to get you uh, off and running to, to start your audiogram. In video number two, we talked about picking the perfect audio clip for our audiogram. So we went into our podcast and we uh, we went in and we notated and we looked at all the, uh, the pieces of audio that we wanted for our audiogram. And of course, we save them and then now we're ready to uh, take the next step which is find a, an image for our our audiogram so let's go ahead and talk about that so first of all how do we get images for our audiogram so that we can post them or create them inside of you know our photo editing app or whatever okay so first of all uh, there are a couple things that I think that you can do in order to get the right image for your audiogram first of all when you go in and you create or you start to schedule out your guests one of the things that you want to do first of all is you want to have a series of uh, I guess templated questions that you want to ask your guest um, say hey you know do you have uh, images that I can use for promotional purposes uh, that you know of course that are approved by them um, they'll give you some permission to use those images and they'll say yes of course and then of course they might say um, you can go over to my Facebook use any image right there or you can say hey do you have professional headshots that we can use just you know make sure that you're you're following up and and getting some information from your guest to find out which audio or which image you can use for your audiogram. Now, let me be clear about this and let me uh, make sure that you understand and know that you can't just take images off the internet of people or things um, or just, just anything without permission. This is a huge, huge, huge thing. I want to... I want to really urge you to get permission from people who have either taken the photo or who have permission to use the photo or reuse the photo. Uh, there are photographers all over the world who monitor for their own images. So if you can go, if you go, you're going into Google and you're going into the image search and you're ripping down an image without the rights to use the image, the photographer can come back to you and either give you a cease and desist or they can, they can basically fine you for using that. And this has happened to me before in the past in my early days of doing uh you know internet promotion and marketing and we used an image and uh, actually it was something that was from getty images and we ended up having to pay a thousand dollars just because we did not have permission to use that image so make sure that you have all permission to use the images make sure you are following up with the photographers and you are following up with um the person that you were going to be interviewing all right so that's one way that you can do that now another way that you can do this is something that i, I do with my clients and uh, my particular one of my particular clients, she likes to have her ducks in a row. And basically what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to show you uh, a Google form that she has created. So what you can do is you can create a Google form that is like a pre-interview questionnaire. And it's going to ask your potential guest, hey, you know, can you answer these questions for me? So if we were to go ahead and uh, go into a Google Doc right now that I have created for her, you can see that there here is a, a pre-interview uh, a questionnaire. Uh, and basically it's for my client. Uh, and she basically has written now uh, a description of what she wants her guests to fill out and the reason why she needs this information. So uh, we ask for an email address. Uh, most people have a Gmail address, but we ask for an email, uh, email address because 
if you don't have an email address, you can't take one of the steps that I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, we have the full name. Um, this is really good for if you're your batch recording guests. All right. Uh, she has full name. Um, she has uh, uh, parsed out here. Which program are you going to be? She does three different programs. And then, of course, here is the, the key here. Now, you need to have a Gmail address in order to upload five photos. You can have a file upload option when you go in and you create a Google form. So make sure you're going into your Google Drive and you're looking for the option forms and you can create a form that has these you can create this this form yourself all right and then you can create an option here on uh, the right hand side and say okay I want to file upload and then you can choose which uploads there are okay now I know that this works for the business um, you know a G Suite okay so I'm using G Suite in this case and so is she I'm pretty sure that you can use it with Google Drive if you're just using a regular Gmail address in other words you have a Gmail address and it has Google Drive it should be able to give you the option here if it does not then you're just gonna have to go the old-fashioned way but I do know that uh, this is something that I do use um, maximum number of files you can create they can upload up to five and then of course uh, maximum file size up to a gig okay so they can upload an image up to a gig now you can change how big that is of course um, on the G Suite uh, plan of course I have the ability to upload at least a gig some images they only give you like a certain amount of megabytes so just kind of be aware of that but that's one way that you can collect your images with uh, Google uh, Google Drive and Google Forms and then of course let's just go ahead and show you some responses here okay and if I were to come in and I were to show you responses and here we have like you know one of 15 she's you know we've gotten one of 15 and so all we have to do is come in and let's say we want to go to you know 16 we want to go to 16 and uh, we see that there are there are images here oops I'm sorry we got to press enter oops oh there is no 16 let's see <laughs> let's go to, let's go to 12 and we will see here and then of course you can see that there are images here that were uploaded so you can go directly into the form and the responses and then you can come in and you can click on those images and it will show the actual image downloading itself and then you can view it and download it to your desktop to use for your particular audiogram so here you see there's an image that is uh, that is from this gal named Allie. And so we could download this and use this for uh, our, our audiogram. We're going to use a different image for our audiogram, but this is just one way that you can uh, collect images. Now, another way that you can collect images, let's say you don't have a guest, all right? And let's say that um, it's just a solo podcast. Maybe it's just you and maybe your, uh, your co-host, or maybe it's you and just by yourself. And you're utilizing and you're talking about a particular topic. You may want to go with using some type of stock photo. Now, this is where I would go in and I would start using Canva. This is a number one why I'd be, I'd be using Canva, uh, canva.com for uh, stock photo images. And of course, I would be using it to create the template that I'm going to use to put into headliner uh, so or the the image to that I can use to, to be putting into headliner so um, it makes it easier for you down the line so here's the basic understanding of of how headliner works okay you're going to have uh, three different styles and you'll see that when we jump into the application um, in the next video uh, but basically you're going to see a square you're going to see one that is landscaped and then you're going to see one that is in uh, vertical uh, mode and of course these are three three different dimensions all right the dimensions that we're going to be using is specific for Instagram and let's say Facebook all right and it's going to be a square perfect square it's going to either be 800 by 800 it could be 300 by 300 it could be 1200 by 1200 those are proportionate to make a square so what we'll want to do is we'll want to head on over to Canva and you can create a Canva account for free. This is just this is such a great tool to use. Canva is just amazing. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you've not heard of it, go on over there and check it out. But once you jump into Canva, you're going to be given an option, I believe, to use either Canva uh, 1.0 or Canva 2.0, or I think it's 1.2 or 2.0. There's two different versions. I'm using a combination of, of both, all right? So you can use 1.0 or 2.0. It's gonna be completely up to you. But um, I would say that if you really wanna get specific and you want to jump in and, and and crop like you would use cropping features inside of I'd say uh, you know Photoshop or Adobe uh, Illustrator uh, Canva 2.0 is going to be your answer okay so first what we want to do is uh, when we step into this game we want to create a square okay and there's all these templates inside of Canva all right and you'll see one here that says social media 800 by 800 pixels so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to click on that one and it's going to open a brand new tab 
and it's going to uh, create this template for us, all right? And so this is going to be our first steps into creating the audiogram. Once the page has finished loading, you're going to see that it is a blank slate, okay? And so what I particularly do for my own audiograms, what I like to do is that I like to have a logo on the very top, and then of course I like to have the image, and then of course I like to leave some blank space down on the bottom so it looks like all the other, uh, I guess you could say, uh, how would you say it? It's just basically how all the other video images with audio are showcased on these social platforms. And you'll see what I'm saying here in a second. So first, what I'd like to do, especially for my uh, my per personal style, is I like to change the background up. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to background and then I'm going to choose a solid color. And we're using Canva 2.0 here. Okay. And I'm going to choose black all the way. And my background is now black. Okay. Then what I want to do is I want to grab an image. So I've uploaded an image uh, into my uh, repository here. Okay, I have multiple images that I can use. I haven't uploaded this, uploaded this specific image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my desktop and I'm going to pick this picture of my friend Kyle who's playing bass for a band. And all you got to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, you just got to drag it in to the Canva window and you see here it says uh, drop to upload your image. Uh, you can upload multiple PNGs, JPEGs, or SVG files. All right, so we're gonna upload this picture of Kyle and um, you see that it is uploading right there. And once it is done uploading, all I need to do is I need to click on it and it inserts the image right there. Okay, now it doesn't look like it's too clear. Oh, there it goes. I was gonna say it doesn't look like it's too clear. So we're, I was, if that ever happens, just delete the image and then just reinsert it and then it should come back up. So in this case, what I like to do is I like to make the image the width of the enti entire square. Okay, so we're gonna change the width of this entire square and make it proportionate, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and go right there and there's this fantastic image of my friend Kyle. Um, he looks beautiful, right? He looks beautiful. And the next step that I wanna take is I wanna crop this image, all right? Because I wanna have some space up here on the top and I wanna have some space on the bottom that is allowable for that black background, all right? So I'm gonna crop his image. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to crop it about right there. All right. And then I'm going to scroll down and then what, this is where it really takes shape right here. I'm going to crop and you can see the black background. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it right about to there, maybe a little more like that. And this is all going to be up to you, you know, just kind of, kind of understand that. So let's go ahead and crop it and see what it looks like done. And there it's cropped, all right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down and center it, okay? And I'm gonna center this. Now I have this image of Kyle. I have Kyle on, on the page. Now what I wanna do and what I typically like to do is I like to put my logo in there. So you can upload your, your logo uh, into uh, Canva and then you can insert it in here as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that right there. And this can be the template for every uh, audiogram that you create, all right? Now, sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll create and I'll say like, uh, you know, swing shift side hustle and then I'm going to create some text and I'll put some text here and I'll change the color to uh, white and then let's just say uh, featuring, featuring Kyle Kolsch of dead and then, um, maybe what I want to do is I want to make that all capitalized. All right. And then we'll bold it. And then what I'll do is I will move it up and I'll put it right there. Then another thing that I like to do is I like to say, I like to go, all right, let's make a copy of this and I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to move this down right here. And I'm going to I'm gonna, let's say I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna actually put my web address in here too. So I'm just gonna go to, and this is just good for branding. Uh, swing shift side hustle dot com and that's where we are going to put this we're going to just kind of arrange it right there you can change the width of how this looks so that it doesn't come all come out all weird and so there you go so now this is what this this image is going to look like now the reason why i've created this space right here uh between the black black and the image right here is because this is where i'm going to put my waveforms when i insert this inside of 
uh, of headliner. Okay. So this is basically all you're doing is you're just going in and you're creating these images over and over and over and you can create multiple images. Now I got, I got other images of Kyle that I can put in here. I mean, I could put another image in here that is, you know, it's not going to be Kyle, but let's just say, uh, it's going to be an image. Let's just put an image of like some of the stuff that I have gone ahead and done right here. And you can see that there's an image right there and you just keep doing this over and over and you create this, this, uh, this template. Now you'll see that the text w went missing right here. Every time you add a new image, it's going to put it on a layer. Okay. It's going to position it on the very top of everything else. Okay. So you can see that it's on top of everything else, but let's say I wanted it to be behind everything else. So let's just go ahead and go to position and then we're going to go backwards. Okay. And then you can see the text showed up. So what I like to do, uh, it's different on a PC on a Mac. It's going to be command and then it's going to be the closed bracket or the left bracket. And then you can just see there. Okay. So I can go back and forth. All right. And so then what I want to do is I just want to move this down and let's say it's right there. And you just keep doing this over and over and over. All right. And make sure that you have this template. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to come on up here and I want to go ahead and I name it, you know, let's just say, um, you know, audiogram template. And then we would just say Kyle Kolsch. And so then let's say once uh, that is done, it's now saved inside of Canva. All right. It's saved inside of Canva and we're just, let's go ahead and move and let's create this image again of, of Kyle. And we're going to go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Hang on. We'll, we'll, and we'll do some cropping. Crop, crop. Done. Uh, we didn't crop it enough, so let's crop it a little bit more. Done. And then let's move it back. There we go. So there's this image of Kyle. We're ready to go. And then once that's ready to go, we have our template ready to go. Okay. So we can close this, we can close this tab. And then once we go back into Canva, we can go ahead and refresh. All right. And once we've refreshed, then there should be a template in there that is called audiogram template and then named Kyle Kolsch. All right. So what you'll see here is of course, there it is right there. And Oops, let's go back just so you can see it. it's right there. There it is. And that is the image that you, I'm going to use for my audiogram. So the images that you can use are definitely going to be up to you. Now, if you're getting images from your guests, that's great. Now, let's just say, for example, that you can't uh, get an image from your guest and maybe it's something that you're talking about that is a more general idea. OK, you can come into uh, Canva and you can look for uh, different elements or you can look for different photos by coming to elements and coming to photos and let's just say we want to look up bass player and then we are going to get a series of images that are of bass players and of course some of them are going to cost money um one dollar to use the image so you can definitely do that and then just pay canva the dollar sometimes there are free like here's one that is free that you can use and you can go ahead and come in and you can uh, adjust this image and then uh you could you could uh, crop it out if you wanted to and make sure that that it has the right uh, the dimensions so that uh, you can use it for your your podcast or for your audio grant. Let's go ahead and click done. There it is. And you're ready to go. And of course, we've created that. So again, I we go in and we can find these images. And of course, you could pay a dollar. Now, you, this is like probably going to be the most affordable way that you can create an audiogram if you don't have a guest image or maybe you're just talking about something in general. All right. What we're going to do with this image that we have of Kyle is we are going to create a clip, an audio clip of something that Kyle has said, and we are going to place captions on top of that inside of headliners. So that's going to be coming up in the next video uh, in this series of how to create audio audiograms with headliners. So if you have any questions, please do me a favor, leave a comment down below uh, in the section below on YouTube. And of course, uh, I'll be happy to answer that. One thing that I forgot to mention is that when it comes down to creating logos, like the logo that I have created here, 
for Swing Shift Side Hustle. I've created that in Adobe Illust um, not, not Illustrator. Yeah, I created it in Illustrator. And I am no graphic designer. I'll tell you that right now. I suck at graphic design. But you need to have something recognizable. Now, if you don't know how to do anything inside of Illustrator or Photoshop, I would recommend going to Fiverr and seeing if you can find a graphic designer that will do it. Or you can try your hand at doing it inside of Canva. And you can see that there are all kinds of elements and graphics that you can use inside of Canva that might make you know a decent podcast audiogram logo or whatever you might might need okay and you can see there's images right there so uh, some are paid some are free uh, it's just gonna be completely up to you but make sure you have a solid logo that is that can uh, be uh, remind that can remind people that this is your podcast all right again like I said leave questions down below uh, if you have any type of question about this and then in the next video we'll show you how we tie all of this together and button it up to create our very first audiogram to promote on our social media networks. If you like this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. And of course, when you go ahead and subscribe down below, hit that red button and hit the bell right next to it because that will notify you when I drop another video in this series, kind of like next week's video. And of course, if you're new to this whole podcasting game and you need some help and you don't know which equipment to use and you don't know where to start, I have an essential equipment guide that you can use and download for free right now on my website. Just head on over to the shanman.com. Actually, the link is down in the description of this YouTube video. So head down there, grab it. And of course, that will get you started on which equipment that you should use to create a really solid podcast, just like we're creating, uh, just like how I'm creating every week and how a lot of people are creating every week. So in the meantime, thank you so much. Make sure you share this video out with your friends and we will see you next week on video four.